Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week May the 16th until uh, May the 20th. I am Harlamos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, although we don't have any major central bank decisions on, uh, on this week's agenda, the calendar appears much busier than last week with several, uh, with several important data points having the potential to well affect market expectations around monetary policy. Among them are a bunch of UK, of UK data releases including the CPI's employment and retail sales, the Australian employment report and the US retail sales. We will also get the minutes from the latest RPA gathering as well as uh, speeches by Fed Chair Jerome Powell and several other important central bank officials. Now let's take things uh, from the beginning. Today during the Asian session we already got China's industrial production, retail sales and fixed asset investment all for the month of April. Industrial production shrank 2.9% year over year, retail sales fell 11.1% while fixed asset investment slowed to 6. Point, um, uh, to 6. Point, to 6 uh, excuse me uh, to 6.3 percent uh, all three of them missing uh, their consensus uh, forecasts in our view this suggests that uh, china's zero covid policy is hurting the economy more than initially estimated and raises more concerns with regards to the spillover effects to the rest of the world. That's maybe why we saw China Shanghai composite trading lower this morning, despite the decent rebound on Friday. Remember, on Friday we noted that the rebound may be the result of, um, of short covering and portfolio rebalancing at the end of the trading week. We stick to our guns that there is still room for further declines in equities as the fundamental landscape has not changed much. The cocktail of developments affecting the financial world are still global growth concerns, expectations over fast tightening by some major central banks, especially the Fed, and the uncertainty surrounding the war in Ukraine. Now, on Tuesday during the Asian session, we get the minutes from the latest RBA a meeting where the bank hiked interest rates by more than expected and committed to doing what is necessary to ensure that inflation returns to uh, target over time. Uh, the bank also explicitly said that this uh, will require further lift in interest rates of over the period ahead. Remember that at that meeting the RBA hiked uh, by 25 basis points instead, instead of the expected 15. This added some credence to the overly hoggish market expectations around this bank's uh, future course of action and resulted in a spike higher in the Australian dollar. However, officials have yet to confirm how fast they are willing to proceed and it will be interesting to see whether the minutes will give any information on that, on that front. According to the ASX 30-day interbank cash rate futures yield curve, market participants are anticipating another 25 basis points hike in June, while they see the rate uh, exceeding 2.5% by the end of the year. Now, anything validating uh, those expectations could support the Australian dollar, while the opposite may be true in case the narrative is, um, is more cautious. Having said all that though, even if the Aussie strengthens on a potential hoggish outcome, we would treat this as a corrective bounce of its recent uh, short-term uh, downtrend. 
It seems that the currency is not responding that much to expectations surrounding monetary policy lately, rather than uh, concerns over the global economic performance and especially the Chinese uh, economy, as uh, China is Australia's main trading partner. Now, a few hours later, during the European session, the UK employment report for March is coming out, with the unemployment rate expected to stay unchanged at 3.8%, the net change in employment to show that the economy has gained 5,000 jobs in the three months to March, compared to 10,000 in the three months to February. Those numbers are very low compared to the numbers we got in the period from July to October last year. And in our view, following last week's disappointing GDP data, they add to fears over a recession in the UK economy next year. Remember that those concerns have officially been expressed, uh, been, excuse me, have been um, have officially been expressed by the Bank of England at its latest uh, monetary policy meeting, with officials projecting a 0.25% contraction for 2023. Average, early, uh, average earnings, including bonuses, are expected to have grown 5.4% year-over-year, the same pace as in February, while the excluding bonuses rate is forecast to have risen to 4.2% from 4%. However, with inflation well above those numbers, real wages are still negative, which adds another reason why uh, the Bank of England needs to keep rising interest rates, but also be careful over hurting the economy more. Our base case scenario is that the Bank of England will not stop hiking, but the pace moving forward may be, uh, may be slower than uh, previously estimated. This is likely to leave the pound vulnerable to more declines, especially against the US dollar. Remember that the Fed is widely anticipated to, con to continue delivering double hikes. Now, from uh, the Eurozone, we get the second estimate of uh, the GDP for the first quarter alongside the employment change uh, for, uh, for that same quarter. The GDP numbers are forecast to have confirmed their, pre their preliminary estimates, while there are no projections for the employment change, and thus we don't expect this, to, this set to affect uh, the euro much. During the US session, we get the US uh, retail sales and industrial production, both, both for April, while we will get to hear from Fed Chair Jerome Powell. Headline sales are forecast to have accelerated somewhat to 0.8 from 0.7% month over month, but the core rate is forecast to have slid to 0.3% month over month from 1.4%. Industrial produ production is also expected to have slowed to 0.4 from 0.9%. So uh, this could hurt somehow the US dollar, but despite the potential slowdowns, we don't expect any major changes to market expectations around the Fed's future course of action from this data set, and thus we don't we won't uh, bet on a on a dollar uh, slide, even if we get a small. It will be, we believe that it will be a small one and uh, very limited. After all, Fed Chair Powell is very likely to reiterate his view that 50 basis points hikes are on the table for the next couple of meetings. But uh, given that investors are already aware of that view and that they have already adjusted to that, we expect them to pay attention to what other Fed officials have to say during the week. In our view, even if we don't get more coggish remarks than those of Powell, as long as there is more support over double hikes, the US dollar could continue to benefit as the Fed will stay among the most hoggish, if not the most hoggish, uh, major central bank. Now, in other words, we get some data, expectations are for modest slowdowns. We don't expect uh, the data to hurt uh, the dollar because uh, Fed Chair Powell is, uh, has repeatedly said that they are likely to proceed with double hikes in the next couple of months. And this is more hoggish than most other major central banks. So the dollar may continue to benefit, especially if uh, more Fed officials uh, support um, uh, support that uh, that view. Now, on Wednesday during the Asian session, we get, we get Japan's GDP for the first quarter, with expectations pointing to a 0.4 contraction after a 1.1 percent expansion in the last three months of uh, 2021. 
Now, this could add to concerns over the global economic uh, performance, but we don't expect it to hurt uh, the yen much. Actually, due to its safe haven status, the yen has been attracting flows from such uh, global growth concerns. Therefore, if there are, even if there is an initial slight uh, to bad Japanese GDP data, we don't expect it to be significant or last for long. We still believe that the yen uh, is likely to continue uh, to continue its latest uptrend, and that uptrend is fueled by concerns uh, over global economic uh, uh, performance. Now, during the early European morning Wednesday, we get the UK CPI data for April. The headline rate is expected to jump to 9.1% year over year from 7%, while the core one is forecast to rise to 6.2% from 5.7%. So, expectations are for more acceleration in UK inflation. This could add credence to our view of, of more rate hikes by the Bank of England, but let's not forget that we already have data pointing to economic wounds, and we also have fears over a recession. So those fears, those concerns could keep the rate path slow, slower, at least slower than some other uh, major central banks. So adding to fears over the risks, uh, over those risks, maybe the retail sales data we get on Friday, which are forecast to reveal another month of contraction. Um, summarizing, we expect the UK inflation to accelerate further, which means more rate hike by the Bank of England, but the data are worrisome, the economic data are worrisome, and which add to fears over an economic recession, and thus we believe that the uh, path of the Bank of England will be slow, and the Bank of England and excuse me, and the British pound will continue drifting south, especially against the US dollar. Now, later in the day, we get more CPI data for April. This time from Canada, the headline rate is forecast to have held steady at 6.7 percent year over year, while the core one is anticipated to have declined to 4.2 percent from 5.5%. Uh, 5 .5%. At its latest gathering, the Bank of Canada decided to hike rates by 50 basis points, as was expected, noting that interest rates will need to rise further. Governor Macklem speci uh, specifically said we need higher rates and the economy can, can handle them, adding that they are prepared to move as forcefully as needed to get inflation on target. So, uh, this uh, places the Bank of Canada in in the same group as the Fed, uh, among the most hoggish uh, major central banks. However, with expectations pointing to a slowdown in inflation, especially in underlying inflation, uh, this may be an indication that uh, the Bank of Canada may not, to need, uh, may not need to hike as fast as initially estimated or as estimated after the Bank of Canada meeting. Uh, Certainly, if we get a slowdown in the CPIs, in the Canadian CPIs, it may, it may need not to, it may not need to hike as fast as the Fed. So, even if the Canadian dollar continue to gain against some other weaker currencies, um, we do believe that it will continue losing ground against the US dollar, even with the Bank of Canada expected to proceed with more rate hikes because a slowdown in Canadian inflation could mean that those hikes may be slower than those delivered by the Fed. So we still believe uh, USD cut could continue trending north. Now on Thursday, Asian time, Australia releases its employment report for April. The unemployment rate is forecast to have ticked down to 3.9% from 4%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has added 30,000 jobs after gaining 17.9 thousand in March. So overall, these numbers point to a decent report and may support somewhat the Aussie, especially if the minutes add some credence to market expectations around the RBA's future course of action. However, as we already noted, we stick to our guns that the Aussie is likely to stay in a downtrend mode. Due to its risk-linked status and its close trade relationship with China, 
it is feeling the heat of global growth concerns more than monetary policy expectations. And finally, on Friday, um, during the, the Asian uh, trading, uh, we get Japan's national CPIs for April. Uh, but we don't expect yen traders to pay mu much attention. We believe that they will stay focused on developments pointing to how the global landscape is, af uh, is affected, uh, meaning still the yen could uh, stay driven by concerns over global economic growth. Just for the record, there is no forecast for the headline rate, while the core one is expected to, um, to jump to 2.1 percent year over year from 0.8 percent. Though a decent uh, jump to the uh, to, to fractionally above the Bank of Japan's target, uh, that rate is still uh, well below the high numbers of other major major economies, and thus we don't expect uh, the Bank of Japan to start, uh, or let's say we don't expect Bank of Japan policymakers to start thinking after their monetary policy. After that, New Zealand's uh, trade balance is also coming out. While later, during the early European morning, as we already noted, we get the UK retail sales for April, with both the headline and core rates expected to have risen, but to stay in negative territory, and in our view, increase concerns around uh, the UK, uh, the UK economy. So that's it. Uh, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and, uh, and listening. I hope you have a great week. And I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next uh, Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 8.30 a.m. GMT. So bye. Have a nice day and a better rest of the week.